Hello, I'm Reza Red from Redacad, and in this video, I'm going to talk about Power BI Report Server. What it is, how you should use it, what are the considerations for it, what are the limitations, pros, or cons of Power BI Report Server. Let's check it out what it is. So let's start with uh, what is the Power BI report server. Um, in Power BI environment, we have the Power BI service, which is the place that we host our reports. It's a cloud-based hosting environment, which I have a separate video about it. Let, uh, you can go and check it out what it is. We also have an on-premises hosting solution for Power BI. Power BI report server is the fully on-premises hosting solution, meaning that your reports won't be hosted in cloud. There is no cloud hosting solution for uh, for this setup. It's all based on on-premises, which is working perfectly fine for those companies who are not yet ready to move to cloud. This uh, type of uh, hosting environment is inherited from SQL Server reporting services environment, which is what we also call as SSRs. Uh, it comes with its own web portal, web service, set of databases. It has a set of uh, installation processes to do. And one important thing is that you also need to have a Power BI Desktop edition that is designed for report server. There are two versions of Power BI Desktop, the normal Power BI Desktop, the Power BI Desktop that is for report server. They are slightly different. I'll explain their differences as well. The reports has to be designed that way. Uh, but it's pretty much like a normal Power BI report. In this environment, you can have Power BI reports or paginated reports, which is basically SSRS reports. This type of environment is available to you uh, in two different licensing paths. One is Power BI Premium Licensing, which will give you Power BI Report Server. Another is the you know, SQL Server Enterprise Edition Licensing with Software Assurance, which that would also give you the Report Server. Uh, so let's go and check out how this works. So first you need to download it, which you can go actually to Power BI website. There's a section for report server. You can download it. The download file includes actually three files. Um, two of them are Power BI desktop edition for the report server, 64 bit and uh, 32 bits. Uh, and then one is the Power BI report server itself. The Power BI desktop installation is simple. So let's talk about the Power BI report server installation. To install the report server, it's an application. You just go and install it. There is also a evaluation free edition for that, which lasts for 180 days. So if you want to try it out, this is a good option to, to work with. You'll follow the instruction and install it. One important tip is that for installing the Power BI report server, you need to have a SQL Server database engine installed. Now, this does not have to be Enterprise Edition, Standard Edition, or anything. This can be even SQL Server Express Edition, but it has to be a database engine installed somewhere in a local domain server. It doesn't have to be on the same server. It can be somewhere that is accessible from this server, but it has to be available. So you need to have SQL Server Database Engine. You also need something called SQL Server Agent, which I'll explain that a little bit later when we talk about scheduling the Power BI dataset. Uh, so after the installation, the important bit to do is configuring your report server because the installation itself is really simple, just few next uh, and then finishes. Uh, report server configuration includes three main steps. So uh, when you go to, in, uh, to configure your report server, first you connect to it, you'll have a name for your report server. Um, the first step is to set up the database. That is the stage that I explained before that you need to have a, a SQL Server database instance installed. Now, um, you can uh, uh, go to the database setup and there's, there are a few steps to follow. There will be two databases created for the report server. One of them is called report server. The other one is called report server temp. These are the two databases that keeps pretty much all the report server configurations in it. Um, the reports that you upload, folder structure, the setup that you do in the portal of report server, all of those would be pretty much stored in these databases. So they are quite important. Also, if you are considering to like backup and restore your report server somewhere, these two databases are the two important databases that you need to take backups. 
And so after setting it up, the next step is the web service setup. Web service is uh, where the um, other applications will be interacting with the report server. For example, Power BI uh, Desktop is one of those applications. Power BI Desktop has to publish the reports into this environment, into the Power BI uh, report server environment. So it requires a service URL. There's a section that you can go and set up the web service URL. It would be just like a URL of your local domain, which you can use it for other applications to use as well. Visual Studio can use that and some other third party tools. And then the last one is web portal setup. So web portal is also a web URL, but the difference of web portal with web service is that web service URL is used for other applications versus web portal URL is used for the users. This is where the actual users will go and log into this portal to see the reports. So this would be setting up that website and that URL. There's a section to do that and it's pretty straightforward to set it up. Once you set it up, the environment would look like something like this that you see at the moment in here. Um, then the next step, so that is Power BI report server setup ready to go. The next step is uh, the Power BI desktop, the report server edition of Power BI desktop install. That is like a normal Power BI desktop installation. However, the difference is that you have to um, you have to be careful that there are some differences. For example, some of the preview features that we have in Power BI Desktop, they are not available in the report server. Power BI Desktop updates every month versus the report server updates every four months. It still updates. So, but it's, it's I would say, a few editions behind. Not that much though. The main features, they are pretty much the same. Um, if you want to create, let's say, a live connection, if you want to create a direct query connection, import data connection, all of those are supported. Um, most of the visuals are supported. A very new visual that is in Power BI Desktop may not be yet in Power BI Desktop report server, but that will probably come very soon as well. Um, so apart from those, there are not much difference. You can actually open a file that you have built in Power BI Desktop open it with Power BI Desktop Report Server Edition and save it. Then that is your Power BI Desktop Report Server file. Once you build the file, um, you can publish it to the report server. It's just as simple as uploading it into the report server, either from the report server itself or from the Power BI Desktop Report Server. And then you can see the report in the report server, which I'm going to show you very quickly in an example. So here is my report server. Um, local report server. This is installed in my local machine. So this address is for my users to log in. My users, in order to log into this environment, they will use their network uh, username and password. So it's, if it is a local Active Directory, they will use that local Active Directory access and password. Now I can create folders in here. I can create Power BI reports, paginated reports. Here you see I have a Power BI reports hosted in here. I can click on it. It's like a normal Power BI report. It is fully interactive Power BI report. Uh, which I would be able to see it and the users if they have access to as you see this is like a normal Power BI report. It also has some features such as commentary um, and um, some, some of the features that can help with collaborating this in your Power BI um, service, uh, sorry, Power BI report server environment. Uh, if you want to share this report, there are options to share it through the folder that you create. And all of those are also uh, quite simple setup. So you create a folder for, let's say, Team HR and, and you can put the reports under that folder. Consider these folders as workspaces that you have in Power BI service, but it's not as intuitive as those because those uh, workspaces, they also have things such as deployment pipeline, some different roles in the workspace. Here we might not have all of those, but still you can manage some of the things in these. In the security tab, I can choose who have access to what part of it. Uh, and this can be all managed. You can add different users with different set of roles. Mm, and depending on their role, they might be able to do different things. When you create the report, you can also manage the data set settings of it. Um, so when, when you create a report, when you publish it, you need to go and set up, for example, the schedule refresh. If it is an import report, uh, 
if you are going to do that, there's a manage setting for, there is a manage um, data set settings, which you can go there. One thing about files and folders is that you need to use a shared path, not a local path. A local path might work in Power BI service with setting up a gateway in um, Power BI report server, local path wouldn't work. So you need to have a shared um, folder path, something like this, which would work. Still it is, Mm, local network, but it is not just a local C colon backslash. It's not like that. Uh, the schedule refresh itself is quite um, easy to set up, and it's I would say much more comprehensive than the schedule service in the schedule report in Power BI service. In Power BI service, you have some limitations on like how many times you can refresh it. Even with premium, you can refresh up to forty eight times. A day. A day but here you can refresh it as many as times you want the main important things is that you need to have sql server agent installed uh, and it should be always running because this is based on that so you can set it up any days of the week you want multiple times a day uh, it's quite comprehensive setup once you create a schedule here this will create a job a scheduled job in sql server agent which you can then also track the history of that job, all of that in SQL Server Agent. The thing about Power BI Report Server is that because it is based on the SQL Server Reporting Services, SQL Server Agents, SQL Server Database uh, Engine, you get all of those interesting features of backup and restore and all of that with it, which is quite good. Uh, however, one of the things that you need to consider is that Power BI service has some features that are not available in the um, in the Power BI uh, report server. For example, um, for example, if uh, one of those features is um, is Data Mart, which is recently announced, that is not yet available in the um, report server. Data Flow is not yet available. Uh, dashboards, metrics, uh, some of the preview features, the Q&A, uh, template apps, the workspace itself is not available. We have folders, which can be some kind of like replacement of that. Uh, but then we don't have apps on top of it. Composite model is not yet available. Analyzing Excel is not available. You can have Excel connection to uh, your analysis services model, but not to the Power BI dataset published into the Power BI report server, not yet. Um, the real through cross multiple reports is not available. So there are some features that are not available. So you have to consider that Power BI report server is like a limited edition of Power BI hosting solution. It's only useful for situations that you need everything to be on premises because it doesn't come at, uh, at full feature set of Power BI. Uh, so the main benefit of this basically is if you are bound to create a fully on-premises solution for Power BI, this is the option for you. This will give you everything on-premises. It supports all connection types, uh, not composite model, but it supports live connection, it supports direct query, it supports import data. You don't need a gateway with this because everything is already on-premises. Gateway is only when you have Power gateway is only needed when you have Power BI service connecting to a local database. In this case, everything is local domain, so no gateway is needed. And you can get this using two paths of licensing, the premium licensing for Power BI or SQL Server Enterprise Edition licensing with software assurance. Uh, I hope this helped you to understand more about Power BI Report Server. If you have any questions, feel free to write it in the comments below. Um, otherwise, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Power BI. Bye.